Welcome to this uh, presentation on how to practice bolero and a little bit of insights into the music. Uh, what I want to discuss with you now is the rhythmic precision required in bolero. Uh, you must be familiar, and I hope you've listened to this, uh, this, this composition, and I hope you understand that there is a percussion instrument, the snare drum, that is playing a rhythm throughout the entire piece. And this, this repeats throughout the entire piece, as I said. That becomes the metronome, or the rule book by which you play your solo. You must play your solo with rhythmic precision to match that percussion part. Now, in an audition situation, it becomes extremely, uh, shall I say, difficult because you need to self-generate that tempo and that rhythmic precision in your own mind. You will not have on stage a, a snare drum playing along with you, but however, in the audience, uh, those that are observing your playing, listening to you, they will be hearing that in their minds and maybe tapping on a table. They may be tapping along, seeing if you play things in time. So it's important for you to master that. And you'll need to record yourself. You'll need to listen to yourself many times to get a feel for where you're stretching things, where you're pushing things, where you're out of tempo. Uh, ideally, you should be listening uh, to the smallest value you can. Sixteenth uh, notes would be great if you can do that. I haven't been as successful listening to sixteenth notes, although I certainly have practiced it numerous times with sixteenth notes in the background. For instance, uh, let's just take the opening solo, and I'll show you how to practice that tonguing sixteenth notes so that you have some rhythmic precision. Okay, so I know I was precise because my tongue's moving at the same velocity, the same speed, and then my fingers are moving. So you could also set the metronome, and mine looks like a flying saucer, but anyhow, set your metronome for sixteenths, uh, which uh, would be really fairly quick in here. Uh, my metronome only goes up to about 208, which is a little bit slow for this tempo. Perhaps you have a metronome that will go faster. 208 is just not fast enough for me. This is played at various tempos, but 208 is certainly too slow for 16 subdivisions. Um, so, you, you might want to then progress from 16th notes to 8th notes, and that's normally what I hear in my mind as I'm, as I'm going along in this. Sometimes I even just tap my foot along, just to, just to make sure I'm keeping that even pulse. So. I wasn't very good at uh, tonguing each 8th note there for you, but I think you get the idea. So if you're hearing in terms of eighth notes, that's going to help you uh, keep uh, more rhythmic there. It's very important that you keep it rhythmic. I suggest that you practice uh, certain small portions of this over and over again with rhythmic precision. Take, for instance, the, uh, the measure that has the triplet eighth note. Uh, let me put this on eighths. Yeah, that's a good tempo. Right now I've got for eights at uh, 132 for the eighth note. Here we go. Uh, so I'm, uh, let me start, start after the breath on the E. See that those triplets there, that's tricky to fit that in, so I meet the next downbeat accurately. And 
and you should practice these, of course, at different speeds because the conductor will never pick your favorite tempo. That's a guarantee. Uh, so this rhythmic precision, very, very important. It's so easy for us to cheat uh, tied over notes. Uh, it's rhythmically really quite complex. You're holding several quarter notes, sometimes a half note, but all of that has to have rhythmic precision. You might be tempted to think that your exposed solos in Bolero are over after you completed the solo on the first page. But I want to bring to your attention there's a very tricky passage uh, a little further in the piece where the bassoon needs to tongue the Bolero rhythm on G4. Here's the passage. Uh, you may want to add a muted fingering that is adding the E key in the right hand thumb. I find that this is helpful. But do also spend some time practicing this. Uh, this is a rhythm that is traded off between the first and the second bassoon and can be really quite tricky. Uh, you need to be able to play it, actually I try to play it even quieter than mezzo piano so that it blends in and is a nice background for the instrument. Let me close here by recommending two articles to you written on Bolero. Both of these articles appear in the Double Read, which is the Journal of the International Double Read Society. If you are a member of that society, then you can access these journals online. If you're not a member, I encourage you to join. It's a wonderful society and has all sorts of benefits for its members. The first article by Dale Clark uh, discusses dissonance and ways of interpreting Bolero, and you may find this interesting as you study the work. I particularly want to recommend the article by Richard Ramey that deals with practice techniques for the bassoon solo. In this article, he provides his vantage point of how to practice the uh, solo. Uh, many of his ideas concur with what I presented in this video and the next. And I just highly recommend uh, this article just as a supplement to what I offer you here. So please do uh, take a look at Richard Ramey's article, and I think you'll find it very helpful. Thank you.